Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk about how we can build safeguards respecting the traditional communities, the Quilombo people, the indigenous peoples. I'm going to ask Miyuki Hayashida, the State Secretary of Environment and Water Resources, uh, to uh, to give the welcome remarks. And we are going to have Marlis, I am Marlis Santos, and we are going to have Monica G. Luis Rios from Earth Innovation and Arubia Guerreri, a president of the Indigenous Institute of Tocantins. And we are going to talk about the indigenous peoples and the Quilombo peoples and the Red Plus program in Tocantins. Good morning. I'd like to thank for your presence and the presence of the Secretary of Rondonia, always a partner in F Innovation, with this wonderful work in our state for some years already. And I'd like to thank the Interstate Consortium, Legal Amazon Consortium, that is offering this space for us to exchange ideas. Uh, on this, these works that are being performed in our states. I'd like to thank the presence of the secretaries, our state uh, prosecutor, José Humberto, and Dr. Aliandro Lacerda, our secretary of partnerships. Thank you. We have a great challenge ahead of us. In the state of Tocantins, we have 14,000 indigenous people nine eth main ethnicities, and these ethnicities are in their territories, in most part uh, regularized and approved, but we still have territories which need to be regulated, and these territories, in some points, they they need many things, and in others, they are well preserved. And I'm talking about the need of food, because in the Cerrado areas, there is a scarcity of, uh, of fishing and also hunting. And it's a space that we must start to work right now. We're going to start with the process of building the safeguards. But in the state of Tocantins, we also have some ethnicities which are in a situation that they have a small population. Vacaro were almost uh, extinguished. They were exterminated. They are only 40 and they live in Ida uh, land in Karaja and the wetlands. And we're going to listen from them in this process. A few in individuals. Next slide. Here is the Bananao Island and the Indigenine people, 200 million hectares. And here, Xerente, Crau, Apinajé peoples. And here we have Carajá, Xambioá people. And we have Crau Canela here. And we also have here the indigenous people of Javaé. And this is the map of the state of Tocantins, areas that are uh, meaningfully contributing for the carbon storage. And this is a work that we have, and it's a great challenge to start the public hearing to listen from them. This is a picture of the Inna people at the Wari Ichi. Uh, Village, we have 45 Quilombola communities. They came from old Quilombos 
traditional black communities and they have this hardship to register their their territories next slide this, these ones in the southeast region of the state is a Colombo region. It's a meaningful uh, territory, quite big, and it demands us to be close to them. These Quilombo people, they leave from extraction, especially of gold and grass, and they make artisanal works for the region of Jalapão. That's what I wanted to mention. I'm going to give the floor to Monica de los Rios, Rios from Earth Innovation, and she has analyzed our gaps of what is lacking for us to conclude the safeguard process. Thank you, everyone for this opportunity to contribute to the Tocantins States Earth Innovation Institute is an institution for legal and technical support for sustainable development and low emissions, including the Red Plus strategies in the state of the Amazon, including Tocantins, as a, which is demanding of which is demanding of technical analysis. For such a program as the Tocantins program to generate carbon credits, which can be used to receive payment for results or can be sold in the voluntary market, it's important that the Tocantins state is able to fulfill the international requirements in order to guarantee the quality of these reductions including the this, this social environmental safeguards for Red Plus. So with this, this analysis of all the gaps that the state of Tocantins still had, so that we could guarantee the safeguards fulfilling, safeguards that was, were established at Conahed, we have this national strategy of networks this national commission of networks and we and now we know what the state must have to be eligible for red plus payments tokenchings has it is eligible for the reduction of the amazon and the cerrado and we also did this analysis of the existing gaps considering the arteries standard we have this framework of safeguards and indicators that we must fulfill from the standpoint of structuring indicators the regulatory framework that the state must use for the safeguard which are the process indicators so the state does it have measures and procedures to implement this uh, regulating framework? So these procedures, are these procedures and measures being implemented in the state concerning the, uh, the Red Plus program? For each one of the safeguards, we have different indicators. For each one of the seven, safeguards, we were able to identify the gaps. Token chains is well, very well uh, positioned in terms of stru structuring and procedural uh, indicators, but we have some gaps in terms of results, in terms of implementing all this framework, this regulatory framework and this framework of procedure. For carbon credits to be generated by token chains, the countries must show that this framework is being implemented, including the consultation processes. That's why we, SEMAR has this task to identify all the rights existing in the state territory of the indigenous peoples and the Quilombo communities and any other group that could potentially benefit, benefit from the program, including family farmers and other actors. So there's a mapping of that. We've, we did an analysis and this conformity plan, what we must 
do to thoroughly comply to the indicators of result, implementing all the framework that Tocantins has. And we did this planning to effectively follow this consultation process of the RAD Plus program, fulfilling the safeguard of establishing participatory pro uh, processes with the participation of all stakeholders. And we have a guideline for the consultations with this kind of actor. The resolution 169 from uh, ILO tells us how to do the consultation with these people. So uh, we we will spend the last month of 2022 doing this free and informed consultation to inform the indigenous people and Quilombo communities about what RAD is, what is this dev development program for low emissions, what it means so that they can be prepared for the next year so that they can uh, start this consultation process that is not easy. It's not enough to bring for representatives of indigenous peoples and say that a consultation process happened. It must be encompassing in the whole community so that we can say that we really uh, consulted the peoples in a participatory way so that we can bring the ideals of these people on how we should implement the program in, the, in their territories. We are following other examples. We've had some experiences in Mato Grosso State led by Fecuinte with this very cool process concerning the communities, the different uh, villages, different regions, bringing what they needed in terms of this program for payment according to the results. So we are trying to observe other experiences to bring different learnings to Tocantins. So I'm very flattered to be trusted by the state to conduct this process that will fulfill the international standards guaranteeing that the rights of different vulnerable groups, including indigenous peoples and Quilombo peoples, the most significant in the state of the countries can be fulfilled. Thank you so much. I'm going to give uh, the floor to Narubia Uerreria from uh, Etna. What a good vibe. I'm going to introduce myself as the old ones with beautiful words. That's how our traditional people introduced itself. I came and introduced themselves. I came from a place where the nature is showing all beauty and harmony and the world is making me be part of this tradition. I am the descendant of uh, a people that is one with nature. I have a people, but everyone is my brother. Uh, this is my greatest and most uh, no and noblest objective. The wind comes and caress my face and blow in my ears, you, saying you're not less than anyone and you're not greater than anyone. Don't be one. Don't be the whole, be the one and the whole, and the whole will be you and you will be the whole. What would be of the rain without the drops? And what, what about the drops without the others? Uh, uh, a brightless star and a, a, a sunny last day, a day with, with no sun. So we are in the right stand for saying uh, this poetry because it, it, it talks about this unit, unity. We've survived because we had a task force of governors so that we could go on with the programs that were hardly built with a lot of hard work during the COPS. 
we indigenous peoples, we fight a lot to be in these spaces. But I usually say that we are the real climate authorities in the world. Without this acknowledgement, we won't advance because our voice came from the past. And up until today, when the elders told us what was going to happen, that the heavens would fall over us, that the earth would be would exact revenge about all the abuse it suffered, about all the exploration of its insights, they were laughing on us. They said that the natural resources were infinite, that the, the man was the owner of the universe, that the science would take us to conquer everything and dominate everything. But today, uh, what is the science talking about? The science is giving, uh, is telling that the indigenous peoples were right. And when we talk about red, the last studies in the UN say that 80% of all the biodiversity is in, in indigenous territories. The National Scientific Magazine in the United States, one of the most trusted in the world, says that 68% of the car carbon stock are in indigenous lands. I'm talking about 58%. We cannot talk about carbon without talking about indigenous people. We cannot talk about climate without talking about indigenous peoples. In the next year, I'd like this stand to be, uh, this place to be an indigenous stand, indigenous place with our knowledge, with our wisdom, with, with our strength. This is going to bring only benefit to us. Yesterday I was here with Marina and the the Ministry of the Environment of the United States said, Marina, I want to meet you, but I want to meet the indigenous people. And I was called to be with them. How to talk about the ind indigenous people without them? We, we shouldn't be mentioned only. Today, we've learned how to speak how you do in your own language, bringing the numbers that you like so much. But we are going to bring the forest and we are going to bring our voices because that's what humanity needs. This strength of the sensibility that was thought to be less. Everything that is female as the earth is dominated like the women, like the earth, like the peoples who have this essence, this value concerning all the art, all sensibility, you think you're less. These people who are bringing the strength, not of the reason only, but a strength coming from intuition, from what we are able to feel. That's why women are said to be less, because reason was put at, at the top. We are not here to say that we are better. We are here to say that we are necessary for building paradigms that this world needs, that life on earth needs to go on. And all this red construction happened because we had allies. Here I have my friend and I'd like Julie to be here as well. She was part of the government and she was a great fighter of the indigenous cause. If I'm here today, that's because you were open for that. I'm the first indigenous person to be part of a com an official committee in the state of Tocantins. I participated in other COPs, but I'm, I'm officially coming this time. I'd like to thank the Secretary Miyuki, who believes in this proposal, and the Governor Van der Lee as well. And I hope that all governors start to bring indigenous people to put indigenous people in the governance. We fought for these principles, the principles of safeguard. Three of them are ensuring the indigenous participation, the governance, the transparency, the respect towards indigenous rights, respect towards indigenous culture, sharing benefits in an equity way. And we're, we're 
pressuring you for that. The first time we participated at the COP was at Rio Plus 20, Jahuri Karaja. Jahuri Karaja had been at Rio Plus 20. We built uh, Carioca. Indigenous from the entire Brazil went to Rio and we built this huge uh, this house, indigenous house, and we had this this uh, all this work, and it was one of the greatest movement we had in the digital in the indigenous movement. But the social movement was not recognized. However, it was such an important and powerful mobilization that the UN had to recognize it. And later on, we had the parallel, parallel meetings. And today, we see civil society with us participating not in the parallel uh, meeting, but in the official meeting. And more and more, we are conquering these spaces. And that's not by chance. I'm not here by chance. Many people fought for me to be here. And many people understood that it was necessary that our voices were heard, that the world could listen to our voices, the indigenous voices. And that is how we were able to make RED, not only RED. RED is the program of reduction of carbon emissions. We were able to make RED even bigger. And that was a joint fight of allies inside the governments, inside the institutions, and indigenous allies. And how I have the honor to welcome here Chai Surui. Her father was in the avant-garde of the carbon construction. For you to see how we're not outside this discussion, it's because we weren't inserted in this discussion appropriately, but the Surui project of carbon was the fourth project in the world of RED. We are talking about the fourth project in the world of RED that was created by an indigenous man, it was designed by an indigenous man. We are in this construction of Red Plus because it came a time when we noticed, how come are you going to compensate only those who are destroying? What is the logics behind this? What about us who are conserving? What about us who are providing an unprecedented environmental service to humankind, are we not going to be given anything? And taking this voice forward, we were able to create Red Plus. And today we were contemplated. And today I wanted Francisca to be here, but I was part of a historical moment. Could you invite her, please? I was part of a historical moment where Julie helped a lot. Francisca Arada, who are our who is our president, Aragon, who is not here, Mahli, I got this invitation through her. We built the regional indigenous, indigenous committee and uh, regional committee of indigenous people and traditional people. Francisca arrived here, a round of applause to Francisca. She is our president. She's the only one who knows how difficult it is to make this construction with the indigenous people because the non-indigenous say it's very difficult to work with the indigenous people, but for us, it is very difficult to work with the non-indigenous people. Many times they consider us without capacities. It looks like they only want figures, but we want to say that these figures will come. All transitions in the world are made because people have the nerve to suggest them. And today we're not only talking about the transition for a new paradigm of humankind like the abolition of slavery. Of course, there were people who only supported this cause because they were going to make profit out of this. Of course we know that, but the time has come, and when the time comes, we need people in all spaces who say, 
I want to make profit out of this, of course. But we need a new global paradigm. Or else there will no, not be life on Earth. Or else we are all going to perish. Of course, we are going to be the first ones. But for us indigenous peoples who see how precious life is on Earth, we wonder, don't you feel love? For us, the Earth is a mother. Don't you feel sons and daughters of the earth why can you do you want to destroy your own mother for us this is the biggest madness that we want to contest i am dressed with the clothes of an indigenous uh brazilian stylist daimolina and she is inspired by the fish pirarucu. I grew up seeing the pirarucu. I grew up listening to the ounce. I grew up listening to the spotted jaguar, and I want my children to see the jaguar free. I want my children to see the pirarucu. Are the animals that are going to feed us the only one who are entitled to life? Are we going to see the a, a monocrop? Are we going to see a single way to love, a single way to live? It's beautiful to be here and see different cultures. It's beautiful to see here. and see that we don't live the same way, to see that we're not equal. I would like to thank Vanda, this beautiful warrior who had uh, an expressive voting in the Amazon. We have to elect indigenous women in Amazonas. She is, of course, our future Councilwoman, she's going to continue in the struggle with us. In all those safeguard programs, we need to be aware that in this fight, the federal constitution guaranteed our lands and our autonomy. When Jurun, the, one of the first indigenous men that was invited to the UN, he was uh, prevented from going because he was told that we were protected. We could not speak for ourselves. And there was, there were people from north to south of Brazil that don't know our true heroes. We have to tell our own story. Our leaders gathered and they said, we're going to transition now. Our struggle, our fights are not going to be with a bow and an arrow. We're going to fight with pen and papers. We're going to study, we're going to the university, and you are fruit of this fight. And we're going to Brasilia. Some of our ancestors walked for almost a, a thousand kilometers because we feel when the moment comes and the moment has come for the humankind. And now it's the moment for those who are feeling it to walk. For us indigenous people, I am an activist, but I have a friend who says, who is an activist as well, who said, I want, I can get something here for you to come to Switzerland. And I say, I'd rather die here. I love this place. My my ancestors are here. My people comes from my people comes from the Araguay River. I want to remain here no matter what. Today we have people who are capable of transforming the world because they are so rich, but they are thinking about colonizing other countries and they want to do a genetic database storage. And these projects are ongoing 
they spent billions to colonize other planets. Billions are being spent now because they know that if we continue this way, the earth is not going to bear. We're not going to have life here. And these billions could be spent to reverse all of that. And I'm, I'm sure that we would. We know that the electrical car projects were not designed to save the planet, but this is the future. It's the only future we have. And the indigenous people are the real climate authorities that can guarantee this future because we're not going to save the planet. We're not going to save nature. Nature is in us. We are nature. If the nature dies, we're going to die with it. The land is in our blood. It's in all our constitution. The water, the air, all of the planet and the cosmos is in our body. We are not on nature. We depend on nature and we're all going to go back to it. And we're all going to reap what we're sowing now. This is the moment to reverse that. This is the moment to call the indigenous peoples. I want next year in the Amazon Consortium to have the indigenous people's faces and the indigenous people's presence. I want to have the people's, the indigenous people's presence in Brazil. We represent Brazil. We represent all the forests in Brazil. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for listening to me. We are, will continue on the struggle. This is a new moment for Brazil. We will be there because we will have a ministry of indigenous peoples. I'm sure that those who will go there will be aligned to us. We need to listen to the indigenous peoples. It'll be necessary. President Lula already pointed out pointed out the environmental relevance in his government and the relevance of the indigenous people. So we'll need to listen to this voice. It is a call from the heart and a call for the legal restructuring of this country. Thank you very much. If you have questions about how the jurisdictional project of Red Plus for the state of Tocantins and the safeguards, uh, how they will work. If you have questions for Narubia to me or to Monica, you can ask your questions now. I'm sorry, this is being broadcasted and you have to speak on the microphone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Neijin. I'm from Rondônia. I'm from Canindé. I'm here with Chai, representing the delegation of Rondônia. And I would like to honor the government of the Conchins for bringing Narubia and for inserting the indigenous people in this discussion. And it's very important that the other governments do the same. We cannot talk about indigenous peoples without the indigenous peoples. If you're going to talk about the red projects for the indigenous peoples, you can take the indigenous peoples. You have to take the indigenous peoples with you. I would just like to congratulate the uh, government of Tocantins. It's just a lesson for the other governments that didn't do the same. And please follow what Narubia said. We are participating in several events. I would just like to give you a picture of the Rondônia situation. We have six, 56 indigenous peoples. We have eight isolated peoples, and we are under constant attack by this government that is ending at the end of the year, and I hope it changes in the next government. I would just like to congratulate Tocantins. Thank you very much. Do we have another question from the audience? Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone, as well. My name is Vanda Ortega. I am an indigenous woman from the Toto people in the state of Amazonas. I would like to thank my relative for such an important speech that is so necessary right now. I come from a region with the biggest indigenous population in Brazil, the state of Amazonas, where the Amazon Amazonian forest is located and the Amazonian basin is located. We see how much the governor of the state during the election period had no commitment with the environmental agenda in Amazonas. We have so much illegal mining that advances to the indigenous lands in Amazonas. And there's no position against these practices that have impacted the indigenous territories, especially the territories of the Mura population that is now being expelled from their territories because of the potassium exploration in this region. When we see the experience of Tocantins that brings the active listening and the effective participation of the indigenous population in this, um, the building of the um, state policy for the governmental uh, environmental agenda, we see that the state of Amazonas is still very behind having the biggest indigenous population present in that state. We are 65 peoples that are not listened to. Much on the contrary, we are very impacted by the policies that do not exist for the protection of the uh, indigenous life and territories. We are undergoing one of the biggest droughts in the state and the Riverside, Quilombolas, and traditional populations in our state are drinking muddy water because we don't have treatment water, uh, water treatment stations in the countryside of our state. Our people is drinking muddy water. And today I saw the news that the governor was going to send filters to the territories. The droughts and the floods in our state are not something new. Every year we have this phenomenon that is aggravating because of the climate change. The droughts have always existed, but the extreme droughts that has decreased the possibility of our relatives to have access to food because the fish come from the river have isolated a lot of the communities. And we have no policy of dialogue. And I would like here to somehow be able to be with you so we can claim that to our state. It is necessary to have those experiences. We don't know what is happening in other states. And we can have the kindness of learning with those that are proposing this. This dialogue with our population is something that we've been claiming for a long time. It is so good that Tocantins is being placed as an example here. It is a small state, but very relevant state as I see here. First, congratulations, and your voice is very necessary in this decision-making space. I hope from here on, no decision is made without the effective participation of the indigenous voices. If there is any project designed for indigenous peoples, it may take into consideration the presence of the indigenous peoples in the governmental spaces. Thank you very much for your space here, my relative. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for your participation. We have here the presence of the former Minister of Environment, Isabella Teixeira, who is watching us. And probably our future Minister of, of Environment. We are talking about the indigenous peoples here and the importance of 
the projects of jurisdictional red having the safeguards of the indigenous peoples, which are the most preserved areas. Minister, we know how important it was your work in the Ministry of the Environment. We don't know if you are going to be back, but if you're back, we would like to hear a little bit from you. We are from the government of Tocantins, and we have the indigenous delegations of other states, Amazonia, Hondonia, and we would like to hear a little bit from you. I'm going to a meeting, but it's okay. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I never left, so there's no coming back. A part of Brazil left us, and next year we're going to be all together because Brazil is going to be united so uh, we can understand the challenges that go through the climate change and environmental issue. I'm very happy to have an, an event like that because Brazil has proposed Red Plus as an instrument with the first frau, the, the forest reference that will be updated with a more ambitious one. When we had the NDCs in Paris, deforestation was 15% of the emissions and today is almost, almost 50% of the emissions. We have a past and the present that is haunting us and all Brazilians must understand the importance of the indigenous territories in the development of the, the country. We have to remove deforestation that is threatening and is bringing degradation, poverty, and breaking the link with nature. And we show the exuberance of the Brazil. We have to change this image. When we look at the favelas in, with the degrading communities, and we observe the strength of the black movement and the youth movement, we have to change the statics. We have to have a housing programs with new uh, design, new materials, working with all the image and creativity of the traditional peoples and the indigenous peoples in the city. We, are, uh, we should connect Brazil. The importance of Red Plus, of having concessional instruments. Next year, we are going to uh, to have the debate on the De Brenton Woods reform. That was the, the system that defined the multilateral relationship with the IMF, regional and, and development banks. And we started discussing about that. And of course, it's going to be uh, strategic to think about the right instruments. When Bretton Woods was conceived 80 years ago, there was no climate change, no environmental issues in this perspective that we have today. So we have to update the instruments for our needs and for a political role. And then there's this important signaling, these movements today. And I, as a Brazilian, I thank you so much, not only the indigenous people, but also the subnational engagement of the governors who resisted creating this new organization, even with the asymmetries that we leave, with setbacks and speeches that are denouncing this deep uh, ignorance on what we are fighting. Brazil must overcome this ignorance. This, this is not a right-wing or left-wing topic. It's the topic about life. It's a life and death decision. And that was the option the Brazilians made when they elected Lula. It's in favor of the country, the planet, and causes that are bringing democracy and the diversity of Brazil and its core. Brazil is a country with alternatives. It's one of the few countries in the world that have has alternatives to adopt this agenda in a bold and singular way. The Amazon is one of our singularities, so we must call the world for the Amazon. And I hope that next year we can have this international meeting in the Amazon calling the world to dialogue on new bases. And on doing so, it means that we are being honest with our 
hardships and we should overcome many setbacks. I think that this proposal of having this Ministry of Indigenous Population is key because we are changing the status of the dialogue, but we must build robust trajectories that cannot be exposed to setbacks. This is the learning of the last four years. Everything went down very easily. We had an unprecedented uh, eroding of our institutions and our democracy that is scary to us. And the Federate system is fragmented. It's one of the consequences, the negative heritage of this government that we just saw. Because the federal, federal relations are fragmented and, or suffered deep erosions. When we observe what happened to the health system, to the educational system, safety system, environmental system, not only IBAMA, ICMBO, and so on, the relations between the federal local and subnationals are fragmented and we are a federation. We do not work separated, we work together. That's what's bringing our strength. And we should observe the subnational level, but also the regional le le level, the Pan Amazon. I'm going to talk about that later on. When I was the minister, I had the initiative of putting together the, the Congo, Indonesia, and the Amazon. We shared deforestation uh, data with the Amazon fund. For us to be in this initiative, we must have subnationals in the countries from the Amazon basin. This is the challenge. And for that, indigenous peoples are key because you have a conception of life that is key uniting your your peoples your your relatives the limits of nature culture diversity with the cultural diversity the ethnical diversity that is defining brazil brazil can only be seen as a civilization due to the original peoples we are very recent country but you are here for over 30,000 years. That's defining the wealth and civilization mark of the country. And we are going to start a new trajectory from next year on. It's a long journey full of contradictions, but we are going to need patience and, and wisdom to understand our journey and under, uh, to understand that bringing together everyone is something that we wish and it's very complex we should convince people to be together for our own good it's a long journey but with no setbacks we are going to be a fairest a country more inclusive a country with red plus on how we are going to negotiate we must understand how we are going to move on with the traditional peoples Red, when it started, generated a lot of contradictions for everyone, including for the indigenous peoples. Many said, what about the other projects in other countries? So we were fear about, we had fear about that because hunting was forbidden and so on. But we started to discuss and improve the the Red Plus project, bringing safeguards, government governance space, monitoring all the stages, including the indigenous people. And we transformed Red into Red Plus because they are going to be benefited and us indigenous peoples who are providing all this environmental service won't receive. But so we conquered this space and we put the safeguards and right now we must strengthen this mechanism more and more because the UN mechanisms, they take too long for, for us to readjust. I have to go because there are people waiting for me, but you captured me as a lost carbon and I was captured and I'm being storaged. Uh, I'm very honored, no problem with that, but Who's, uh, who, who is going to admit me is right there, happily standing, looking at me. But we, we made Red, Red Plus, we involved the leaderships and so on. And today we have a new reality. It's the political reality is different and we must understand that. When we talk about the end of deforestation, Red is a, a 
uh, prevented the, the first station. In this trajectory, how can we have the appropriation of red plus in this new moment? This is the discussion that you have evolved, and I hope that the new administration in Brazil can receive that. This updated corner red with new spaces for debate, understanding the demands and the strategy that the, the country will adopt, considering all the interested all the interests, your interests and other interests. This is the leadership considering the present, not the past. I I, I did so many things. Uh, but we have to do new things. And I hope that the new administration will bring new leaderships, new faces, new leaders. We started almost together. Chai was, is my best child, best friend now. But in reality, we have to, to bring the present. The fight is present, but propose things that we can advance in this shared trajectory, understanding the diversity in Brazil, not only the Amazon, we have to bring together uh, everyone, the Amazon Brazil. And let's move on because I think that we have this dialogue to strengthen the democracy. Never forget that. I'm from the generation and we are uh, the, from the generation that fought for the Brazilian demo, uh, democracy. Don't give up on that. Climate will enable uh, a more diverse country showing solutions and, and is solidarity to the peoples and the world. We have to operate towards peace, not towards intrigue and lie. And Brazil will be this country we will go back being that country that the, the entire world is waiting for. And I was talking to this, uh, to this English representative and he was, was talking to me that he, was, he couldn't sleep during the, the ele Brazilian elections. And I count on you. And we are going to fight. I'm going to be a climate influencer in the background and count on me. I'm a great defender of this contemporary Brazil. Take a picture with us, please, before you go. Thank you. Let me hold your mic. Thank <laughs> you. 